I'm oh, mostly known for editing the Guinness World's blog, where we have for years mocked the decline of what we call the dead tree press. We are often unfairly characterised as enemies of the newspaper business. It's not true. I love the news business. In fact, I was from the age of 12 to 15 a newspaper boy. And I would say a newspaper boy if some editor hadn't quadrupled the size of Sunday Times, broken my back trying to stop it from going on. I wonder what ever happened to him. <laughs> I am the only person to have three summonses from Lord Hudson. I'm probably the first journalist and hopefully the last to be censored by him. He ordered me to take down the last Campbell's witness statement uh, from the inquiry from my blog. Uh, it seems like everyone else in the media he hates being scooped by us. <laughs> uh, the letters and recommendations are a threat to the free press for at least three fundamental reasons. Firstly, the principles of giving politicians any role in regu the regulated press However limited is a bad one. Politicians will always complain about press because the proper relationship between the press and politicians is as that between a dog and a lamppost. <laughs> there is potential for menace politicians have any say in free press. Secondly, it will turn judges into censors. Thirdly, if you make the press any more boring, they will have fewer readers and go bankrupt sooner. Be in no doubt the chilling effect of the other makes papers more boring. Let me de develop my first point. In fact, politicians are claiming that statutory underpinning will not lead to their medicine press. I say they are already medicine press, as the threat of legislation looms. The first time I met Chris Bryant was at the event held by the Press and Place Commission. They were worried about uh, regulating offshore-based websites like mine. I told them not to worry, they can't regulate it. Anyway, towards the end of the seminar, <laughs> Chris told me to my face, in front of everyone, in so many words, that he wished to see my site closed down. Let me repeat that. He wished to see my site closed down. Mr. Bryant now expects me to believe he is a guardian of a free press. <laughs> Chris will no doubt protest that he wants to see decent media standards and thoughts. Whenever you hear the great and good use the phrase media standards, know this, they really mean censorship. What about Tom Watson, the hyperbolic scourge of Murdoch? What kind of guy in the free press is he? Well, Harry Cole, who works for me, once wrote something on the blog that Mr. Watson didn't like. Harry also co writes a column with me in the Daily Star on Sunday. Tom Watson calls the editor of the Star to complain about being written. Harry also contributes to the Spectator. He called Fraser Nelson to complain about being written on our blog, very much. Uh, when Fraser gave him short shrift, he called the publisher to complain about Fraser and Harry. <laughs> Tom Watson was trying to get Harry sacked for completely displeasing him. Now, this is when Watson was on the media set committee, leaving the charge into his potential and all the rest. If Watson had had a statutory lever, he would pull it out and open the trap door on the Harry and the young journalist. The fact is that the Nelson inquiry, never mind the outcome of it, has already had a chilling effect. Since the closure of the world, not one single politician has been called this pants down. <laughs> they all have either become true to their wives, but that was, wasn't it? They've all that even become true to their wives. All the papers are afraid of the class. A lack of a lack of extramarital affairs reported is an unhealthy state of affairs. Why is it an unhealthy state of affairs? All my experience tells me that it is a truism that the type of politician who cheats on his wife is a type of politician who lies to the voters. A free press informs the public as the true nature and character of our public figures, not the false image they would have wish, wish to have us believe. 